So this is the City Council Select Committee to study barriers to serving on city boards and commission. Today is September 13, 2022. This, this meeting is going to run from 7 to 8.30 and is being held as a teleconference over Zoom and is being recorded. Welcome, everybody. Um, roll call, Beth. Uh, Javier. Here. Uh, you said Jamila was not coming? Yeah. Uh, Mara? Here. Gwen? Oh, you said she's in the car, right? Okay. Um, Jana? Here. Garrick? Here. And Cynthia? Uh, here. Excellent. We have quorum. As I said, this meeting is being recorded, and at the same time, it's being uh, done over Zoom. Um, I'm going to open it anyway for uh, public comment. I know that we're coming within like 12 minutes after the time that we're supposed to come in, but just in case, I'm going to wait one or two minutes if just in case somebody comes. Um, In the meantime, that we're waiting for that. Oh, hopefully, every one of you guys is safe at home. Excellent. Cool. Uh, having in mind that no, we don't have uh, anybody waiting to do well. If uh, if uh, Vice President Foster wants to pull a comment, more than welcome on to be recognized later on. That's not a problem. So we're gonna move to the regular agenda. Um, I know that um, uh, almost two weeks went by after the last time that we met. I know that there, there was some back and forth in relation to the minutes and notes. Uh, Cynthia, was that was that resolved? Um, I think you're not talking about the latest minutes, are you? No, 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 not even, not even, not even the last, the last, last, but the previous one. Uh Okay, just to be clear, we don't have minutes for the last meeting, or do we? We, no, not yet. Okay, fair enough. Um, wait, yes, wait, I, wait. I, sure I sent meetings, minutes for the next, last meeting. Let's see, which? Uh, no, I was proud for sending them so quickly, I thought. I received minutes for the 5th and the 16th. And I didn't see any back and forth about it. I might not have been copied on it, but. Yeah, but those are the two previous one, not counting the last one, right? Uh, I thought August 16th was the last one, wasn't it? Mm, let's see. Uh, let's take a look here. According to my calendar, it was. Yeah, yeah, that was, that, that, yeah, those were sent. Yes. Okay. 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 So this is the thing. Uh, there's a lot going on in the world now. <laughs> <laughs> I would be more than willing to table the approval minutes. Having in mind that, as I said, now we have said on the stand that our meetings are going to be the second and the fourth Tuesday of every month. So I would be more than fine waiting because I do prefer you guys going through the minutes. Uh, so. The minutes before the 16, Cynthia went really in uh, in depth onto it, and that was really, really good. And I would prefer for you guys also to to take a look to it. If that's okay with you, we can we can just table it and move the problem of minutes, including for this meeting to the to our next meeting. Is that okay? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Yep. Okay. So that would mean next meeting would be three, three minutes that yes. would be on the table for approval okay yes and just to be clear uh, just because i'm on a different 
a board that works a little differently. Um, the procedure will be, the minutes will be sent out to all of us at the same time. And if we had a correction comment question, should we direct that to you, Javier, or to Beth? To me and Beth. Okay, great. Perfect. Um, Thank you. Yes. And um and when I send uh, when I prep the the new agenda for the for the next meeting two more weeks, um I will detail and I would put links to you know the 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 documents so we can we have much sort of clarity with that. Is that okay, Beth? Yeah, that's fine. Great. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, general dis discussion item. So. Uh, we're getting, so we spent the, the last meetings talking about procedural stuff, right? Things that systemically would work better within the city. We talk about the possibility of creation of a portal, a, uh, an automatic system for people to be able to submit a uh, letter of intents, also uh, the same portal that would contain the information in relationship to vacancies uh where people would be able to keep track of where the application is so nobody falls through the cracks and we were talking a lot about that and i mentioned last 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 meeting that now we're going to start moving towards uh talking to people and that talking to people involves the first step which is talking to our to what i want to call our captive audience which is people that are serving right now they are sitting right now in boards and commissions. Uh, hey, Wen. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good. Hopefully, you're you're having a good starting of uh, the school year. Uh, yeah, it's been really very invigorating. I guess I could say. Excellent. Yes. Very so good. When, Thank you. So, when we're tabling the minutes for the next meeting, so we're going to have three three uh three set of minutes to approve in the next meeting. And now we're moving to the general discussion items. Um, we, uh, I'm gonna re restate this. We have said that our meetings are gonna be the second week and the four, the second and fourth Tuesday of each month. And miraculously, that worked for everybody. And I want to say, Mara, thank you so much for being flexible, uh, and everybody here for being patient and gracious about that. Um. Okay, so we're gonna get into into sort of the meat of doing outreach, and that's gonna and the success or not or you know the failure of the outreach is gonna depend on us on the members of the of the committee. Um, I'm gonna share my screen, and um, let me see. Uh, hold on, I think I had to select the screen that I wanna. Yes, there you are. So I sent a link for each one of you to take a look to the draft of the Google form that we uh, that I created. Uh, this is really important, right? So Jenna, thanks to the concerns that you brought up last meeting, I had a really good conversation and back and forth with the city solicitor in relationship to uh what would be public record what would be considered uh subject to public record right so i'm gonna stop turning this for a little bit so one of the questions was that how are we able to collect testimonies being thoughtful of those who want to give testimony but they want to remain anonymous right and one of the big conversations that we had was in relation to to notes what happened if I'm meeting with somebody and I'm writing down notes to be able, after that, to be able to bring the testimony to the select committee, right? That, that was sort of the big, the big one. I foreshadow that I would assume that it's subject to public record. I have confirmed, <laughs> as Garrick said, better to confirm it, uh, that yes, it is subject to public record. And 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 the essentially the the idea behind it is that any kind of material that is created in one way or another that is meant to be used in a, 
partially or totally in, in a report back to a city body, it's subject to public record. So if I'm meeting with somebody and I'm taking notes because that's going to end up in my report, that is part of public record. And that makes things a little more difficult. Right. Because at the beginning, when when we talked with Jamila, the idea was to have members of this body uh, doing the outreach and collecting those uh, testimonies, which was going to be you guys being sort of the instrument for that. And by then you guys were reporting back. That didn't work because, you know, we want to we want to be able to to accommodate those people that may not want to be known. They may want to remain anonymous. So. What we came down to, and now I'm gonna literally turn my screen again. Um, so we have created this. And um, and the idea right now, what we're gonna do is that we thought pretty uh, deeply about how to work this in a way that everybody giving testimony has the freedom to opt in on out be, uh, using identifiers, right? Name, location, etc. So the way how we, we thought about this was that still the members of the this committee are going to are gonna do the outreach, but the kind of outreach that they are going to do is going to be different. The kind of outreach that you guys are going to be doing, rather than you guys collecting the testimonies, you are going to have the conversations and you are going to point out the, and the people who are you you are having those conversations that you're gonna get assigned, you're gonna point out to those people uh the link for the form. Right. So in that way, uh whatever material you guys are creating, because you are not expected to report back those conversations at all. You're not expected. So any material that you are creating is not expected to come back here. But what is expected from you is to do the outreach, to have those conversations, uh, to hear if the person to hear if the person wants to go anonymous or not, if you're gonna go public or not, and point them in the right direction to be able to to get to the Google form. So in that way, you guys are not in a situation where you don't really know what to do, and people have uh, different options to be able to openly participate on this process. And I would like to set up to, to open the floor to for comments uh, or any kind of uh, idea about this. Jenna. Uh, I'm a little bit confused about what you just said. So is the idea that we're just reaching out, uh, say, to the chair of another public body and saying, we've put together this form, we would welcome testimonies from members of your body and leaving it at that? Or are we having the conversation, but just not bringing the information back to the board? And if they say something interesting, then asking them to come and make testimony? I don't know, when you said have the conversation with them, what's the, what's the substance of the conversation that's the part of the outreach that we're doing? So the, the outreach is, as you said, you know, everybody's going to get a sign four to five uh, different people from different boards or commissions, right? You're going to go. You're going to talk to them saying, this is what we're doing. Hopefully, you're going to explain where they said a committee, blah, blah, blah. This was why it was created. This is the reasoning behind it. And we're sort of, we, we did this in the first part. Now we're sort of contacting people that are serving and, and, you know, we're looking about transparency. We're talking about procedures. We're, we're talking about streamlining. And I would like to encourage you to, to and we create a form. So you have, you're going to have the conversation of why we exist, why we're looking for testimonies. Uh, you, and, and, you know, whatever that person wants to share with you or not, that's up to them. You are not expected to report back anything. Right. And I think that's that's the big difference, right? So um the, the the point of the outreach that you're doing is sort of to, you know, you're gonna be an ambassador for this select committee. You're gonna explain what we're doing, what we're hoping to do, why we're doing it, what we, why it was created, and you know, and talk about that to the to the chair uh or anybody that some maybe a chair said. You know what? I think that you have to talk to this member of my committee. 
because I think that person has ex and and you know you do the same with that person, right? Uh, it's that simple. And at the end of that conversation, you take. We would love for you, within your capacity, because you know we have to remember to be able to for me to be able to be here saying whatever comes to my my head and my mind is privilege. Not a lot of people has the privilege to be able to sit here and say whatever they want to say. I mean, if you look what I said during the Rohanta Police Review Commission, that's privilege. So um, I would say that's the kind of conversation we're looking. Any other conversation that you want, or want to have with that person, that's up to you. You're not, again, you're not expected to, to, to report back to us. Okay. Is that, is that, that's answer to your question, Jenna? I, yes, um, I guess my question is if, if the conversation evolves um, and the person that we're contacting decides they want to share more and we sort of get into a discussion about it and that's something and we hear something that we think would be useful for this body to understand at that point, then I'm assuming we would want to come back and report and take notes and I, I, I guess I'm just trying to understand if the conversation evolves beyond that sort of preliminary, what you just described, if here's who we are, here's what we're looking for, encourage them to give testimony. If it goes anywhere beyond that, what do we do with that information? Because in the world of the planning board, my understanding of open meeting law is that you, if you have a conversation that would have any impact on your deliberations, that that is... Uh, needs to be made part of the public record. So if I was having a conversation with a chair, just because I didn't report it back doesn't necessarily mean it wouldn't affect how I'm thinking about things. So that's where I, I'm a little unclear about whether we should um, just cut off those conversations or what so to do with the information. The, the charge that I'm giving you is the charge that I'm giving you. If you decide to have those conversations, as far as I'm concerned, that's up to you the charge that I'm giving you it's to put the mission of the of the select committee out to explain what we're doing how we're doing why we're doing it encourage people to go to the Google form if they want to talk you I mean if let's put it like this if somebody wants to talk to you you have to say oh hold on if you tell me x y and z and I have to write it down I'm going to have to you know that's going to be pulling you're going to have to do that Okay. But as far as I'm concerned, the charge that I'm that I'm giving you the task is doesn't 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 it's there is not an expectation of you having to report back. There is not gonna be a meeting for you to report back. I talked to seven people and they no. That's uh, you know. This, this is literally the same than a city council member having a conversation with next door neighbor or somebody who is complaining because there is a crater in their street, which is my street is full of those, right? My conversation complaining to Jim about the crater in my street is not subject to open meeting law. I mean, to, to bully record request. It's not subject, no. He, he can say, Javier, in the meeting, Javier told me that he has a crater in the street. Or he can say, you know, some neighbors have told me that there is a crater in Northern Avenue, which is true. Right? So, do you understand what I'm saying? Excellent. Uh, when? Hopefully my fan is not too loud. Can you guys hear me okay? Thanks. Um, well, I looked at the form and I thought it was just right um, in terms of, of, you know, I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, I guess it would de depend on the context. I'm kind of um, responding to what Jana was asking is like, um, you know, some things just come up because you see people around town, which is very normal to happen in Northampton. So, there are conversations that happen and, um, you know, I, I guess the way I feel about it is like, you know, it kind of takes it up out of anyone, our hands, um, because no matter, you know, even if we're doing some kind of reporting or something like that, it's always going to be biased. 
and so to me, it's better to have that written and have it in a firsthand account. Um, and then also um, in terms of just privacy, I think, um, but those are just some thoughts that I had. I, I, I thought it seemed like it was just right. Um, I, Um, I, I guess, I guess it would be maybe, maybe we could add a little more about the mission at the top of the, the page. And so that's just kind of a thought I had, but that's about it. Thank you. Thank you so much. When Cynthia. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, Javier. I'm having a huge disconnect here because, um, why, why even talk to them if we want them to fill out the form is my first question. Um, because uh, let's let's be honest here. I mean, if I call, if I'm supposed to contact Bob and what I'm really interested in Bob, hey Bob, how did you get on this board? And Bob says, my sister-in-law told me to apply. Now that's a relevant piece of information, right? <laughs> or um, the mayor told me to, or, you know, all those kind of, that's, that's a relevant piece of inf data gathering information that I would love to see how people took the first step, because we're talking about accessibility. Why aren't people taking that first step? So I kind of want to know that. And um, when the question says, have you previously served on a board or commission? Well, I'm assuming they have because I wouldn't have gotten their name. So I'm not sure that question, uh, you know, has, I mean, it's kind of like, yeah, you're, you're on a board. And then um, I'm just interested in a little bit more for gathering information on the Google form. How did you hear about this position? You know, I, I mean, I'm really interested in the access. And so, um, so why even have a conversation with them? I mean, I'm, I'm getting hung up in the city solicitor's notes and all that kind of stuff you can or you can't do. Why don't we just, uh, you know, do the form the way we want the form and have them fill out the form? Because then it becomes public record. And that will say something to us if people are like, oh, no, I don't want to do, I don't want to do that. You know, that'll say something. I, I, but help me out. I, it just might be a huge disconnect that I, I'm having right now. Yeah. Um and I'm going to sort of address that, right? So those those are two things, right? The first one, it's it's a simple fix, right? To adding uh, how did you hear or how were you recruited or how do you ended up serving, right? That's that's sort of the first thing. And that's an easy fix, adding it to the form. Why, <laughs> why do we want to have a form, right? Um, and this is interesting because when we were working on the uh, omnibus bill, the the, poli the police reform bill, uh, two years ago, um, I I would love Cynthia, and I'm gonna be, and I'm I'm gonna say this because we know each other really well. I would love for me to tell people that we live in a in a in a in a racist systemic society, and people take my word. I would love that. <laughs> It's not like that. And even more Massachusetts, right? Massachusetts is, is sort of characteristic of let's let's create a committee for things that we don't want to deal with. I'm not saying that this is the case, but you know, in a, in a lot of other cases, it is, right? So because we are part of a process, because we are our our, our charge is to study the barriers, whatever. Uh, recommend, I was going to say solution, whatever recommendation we come in, we need to be able to point why we got to that recommendation. Testimonies are, in my point of view, and the gathering of testimonies in those conversations are an important piece for transparency and for us to be able to show how we got there, right? We talked a little bit a couple of meetings ago that um, 
if you haven't read the the Northampton Police Review Commission report, I would invite you to do it. Dan Kennedy and, and Cynthia did a wonderful job putting that together. And uh, most of the chapters is, they, it began with an extract of testimonies that we had from people uh, either uh, filling out the Google form that we created, coming to public hearings and giving testimony or sending directly testimonies to the commissioners, right? Um, and at the end, if I remember well, Cynthia, you know way better than me this, uh, towards the, the, the last part of the report, we added a set of testimonies. Uh, so I see testimonies as a way to show how our thought process got influenced to the recommendations that we're giving, that those recommendations are not random and are not just, you know, because just because, right? Um, and this is really good because this makes me think about, you know, how other ways we can, we can show besides, you know, the recording of these meetings and the discussions that we have, how else we can show our thought process in relationship to the recommendations that in some point we're going to start talking about that. Um, hopefully I'm sort of answering your, your, your concern. Well, I, I agree with you completely, but I think I'm I'm sort of hesitant because you set you set the conversation up, Javier is like, well, if you take those notes, be careful. I have you know? to. I I I, I <laughs> and you know me well. I'm the messenger. It's not that the message makes me happy. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just yeah, I mean I just know we yeah, Mari Mari, you're you're shaking your head too. So I think you might be like <laughs> wanting to jump in here as well. But um if I'm going to talk to an individual, I'm going to take some notes and they're going to tell me, yeah, my brother-in-law told me that he's the relative of so-and-so and they said, do this because you're a shoe in or I'm going to talk about that. Right. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm that's dad. <laughs> okay. As, as long as you guys, when you do those conversations, you're clear about this is going to be church. This is not going to be church. As, as long as everybody's clear, I I think it, it, it's it's fair game. Okay. I just want to, you know. No, I, no, I, I, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> now, the other piece to this is, you know, there was a commission called the Houseless or the Homeless Commission, right? And they weren't under any auspices at all. And they just had free reign to have conversations and to make recommendations, et cetera, not subject to public meeting. And I'm wondering, uh, you know, if that isn't a freer way to go. But we were we're appointed as a committee, so we're bound to do all these yeah. other, you know, steps. But I'm I'm talking too much, and so. No, I I I, I appreciate it, what you're saying, and I and I feel I'm participant of most of your concerns. Uh, Mara. Yeah, I must say I'm more inclined to just send out the Google forms. I think it's most efficient. Um, I think that it, you know, we may lose out on some testimonies, but I do not, I'm not inclined to walk a thin line and be in a gray area of what someone can and can't tell me or whether I should or should not be taking notes. I like the transparency of a Google form. I think it has the transparency we'd like. It's more efficient. It would be quicker. We could look over the results faster. I'm not inclined to gay, get these testimonies and try and either cut someone off or take notes and let them be aware that it will be on the public record. I hear you. My only concern with that is we would fall into one size fit, fits everything. So the only way to be able to give testimony would be either the form or coming in front of us. And and I feel that we would we would lose. And I'm saying this from the point of view that more more than more than 40 uh testimonies were were given to me orally with people being targeted and harassed by the Northampton Police Department. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and none of those people would have never been willing to fill a form or or do anything of that because they would feel that I don't want to let the city know who I am. But they can, they were people even worried about you know geolocation uh, because of the internet and the IP, right? So I I hear you, but I and I would invite you guys if if that's a route that we're going to also think different ways that we can do outreach and sort of add it. Because if not, if we're expecting that the phone is going to be the only one, I think we're going to be in trouble. Mara, anything else? <laughs> I, I just feel as though we're making accommodations for information we're not even sure exists yet. You know, we, and although I, you know, we have strong belief that it does exist, we are still changing the whole format to accommodate something and that will further inconvenience and add more time to our data collection and assessment. I, I, I hear you. I would say data collection without subjects to give you that data doesn't exist. And I, and I, and I, and I hear you. And I think that um, we need to think. We need to sort of brainstorm and see what would be the best way. I personally, and I can, and, and by the way, I can be override by all of by you guys, but I do feel that using one single way to do the outreach and not having the conversations is going to push us in a, in, a, in a way that I don't think we want. Jenna. So I have a few thoughts here. One is that um, I, I feel like part of what I heard both Mara and Cynthia say is if for us as board members, recognizing how difficult it is to even schedule and get into these meetings, I think it's in everybody's best interest for us to conserve our energy. And if we're all expected to do outreach to contact particular people, to ask them to fill out this form and then maybe or maybe not have a conversation that's maybe or maybe not on record. I'm just not convinced that that's the most effective use of our time uh, as board members. So I feel like perhaps an alternative might be that we send out some version of um, basically a call for testimony and invite people to provide testimony in the format that feels most comfortable to them. So share our upcoming meeting schedule, share a link to this form and share that if they would prefer to give anonymous oral testimony to um, if there's a way for them to somehow reach out to us. I mean, I recognize as I'm saying that, that they then uh, you know, would, would have an email on public record, but perhaps there's a way around that um, so that, um, you know, we're giving people some options up front. I also think that on this form, we can put an optional, if you would be uh, willing to have a follow-up conversation with somebody, provide your contact information. So people who might actually be willing to go on record and expand on their answers would have an opportunity to provide that information to us. So I think covering the anonymous um, people who don't want to be on record at all is tricky, but on balance, I agree with Mara that sort of designing our whole process around those folks, um, I, I don't think is the most efficient use of our time. So I think I, I have other thoughts about the form itself um, and the content, but perhaps we should sort of resolve this issue before getting more into the meat. Yes, Gary. Yes. Um, so I understand, like, uh, I, I really am feeling in a, on the side of a lot of people's hesitancy with this situation. Um, and I, I want to say a couple of things. One is that I'm getting the feeling that we're applying some of the methodology that could have been used for the police commission, which was very, or review, uh, which, is, which is a very hot button issue. There's a lot of uh, a chance that you're going to get into some salacious material. People want to be anonymous, you know, when you're being harassed by police and whatnot, as opposed to what I'm understanding is that our goal right now is to contact people who are already as uh, Javier said captive audiences so people who are on boards um, I don't see or, or maybe you know maybe I'm wrong I, I don't see a lot of like uh, really racy stuff coming out of these conversations um, and so it's nice to make sure that we're you know dotting our I's and crossing our T's 
Um, but I, but, but I personally can see us, you know, just calling, I don't know, Bob C from so-and-so and just being like, hey, this is what the commission is. I really love you to explain as much as possible. Um, and, you know, we can, me and Bob C could have a conversation and I could still glean some information and let them know that like, if you want this to be anonymous, we'll, we'll make this anonymous. But um, I also want to, you know, let it be known that even if someone tells you something and, and you take some notes, the only issue is if it gets requested as a public records request. And I, I can't really foresee a, a lot of interest in some of these miscellaneous notes of me talking to a head of a department. You know, I, I, I or maybe I'm wrong if that's not how public records work. You know, we just have to make sure that if we do take notes, we keep them correct. Uh, much like in my city council life, that I have to save every email that comes through. Um, you know, I've, I have been hit with a public records request and, you know, so then I had to go and sort these things out, but that was only once in the last few months. And that was an issue that really was a, a hot button item. So I'm wondering if we're, we're being too cautious right now. Um, and, and I don't know, maybe I'm the only one who feels that way. No, I, I sort of tend to agree with you gary and on that one um again i mean you know again, again and i'm gonna state it again i can be i i will do whatever you guys want to do right but the reality is that gathering testimonies in a, in a context that were that we're doing um and that's the reason what I mentioned privilege, be able to, 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 to come and say X, Y, and C without repercussion, without anything happening, without anything, you know, looking bad at me. I don't care. I, I, I have that privilege, right? But my privilege is not privilege. It's not the same privilege as anybody else, right? And I would understand if somebody's serving and has a, had a bad experience and, and they don't want to jeopardize their position in that commission. And so they, they, they want to say it, but they don't want to, you know, be their identity being chair. Or they have seen something that they, you know, um, uh, whatever. I don't know. But the problem is that I don't know is that I feel that any city body has to create a level field for people to be able to chair. And and, and as, as far as I feel, and I'm going to say it again, once, one, one, I mean, a really good, really easy example. I, believe it or not, I have found people that have told me how easy it is to navigate the Northampton City website. <laughs> I had found people that have told me that, oh, it's so, so straight, so easy. Took me 25 minutes to find the Northampton Police Review Commission uh, uh, report. <laughs> And I grew up with computers, right? So I don't know. I'm just putting that up. When? So I'm thinking like, I mean, haven't we discussed some of the things we would definitely want to know? Just straight up, no. We just, those are just some of the fundamental things, you know, that I was kind of hearing Cynthia speak about, like how long, for example, how long have you served on this? this position um you know how did you arrive at serving in this position um you know some of that stuff is fundamental but i still um do believe that there should be a, a space for testimony um if people want to write it and in terms of like reaching out to people um you know, I love talking to people, so I personally don't have a problem with that. I also have the privilege of being able to to have the ability to do that. Um, but you know, maybe maybe a softer approach initially, like almost like sending out a request uh, through email in some way, and then, you know, following up a week later or two weeks or a month later, you know, and just saying, did you receive it? And, you know, 
I think following up and um, I think it's kind of a mix, you know, some stuff can be really just sort of like really innocuous, like in, in terms of asking questions, you know, um, and then, and then some of it might, might involve more. So those are just some thoughts I have. Thanks. Thanks, Wen. Um, and, and I have to sort of say that I have got a couple of phone calls from people uh, about certain, you know, situations that they have had. Uh, and, and, and Cynthia has mentioned people had, you know, people have, you know, people that had sent application after application after application. And, and you know, they, and they, they are sort of never hearing back. And people assuming things that they may be, you know, one-sided and, um, and I want to be able to at least have the option for people to bring that up. I prefer that the option exists and it's not being used to the option not existing. So people cannot opt into it. Right. Um, I know. I, I think this is a really good conversation. Jenna. Uh, so I feel like uh, part of what might be happening here is that we're trying to do too much with the form. Because I'm aware that even if we were to do individual outreach to say we want to have this conversation and maybe could you think about filling out this form, even if you want the form to be anonymous, as soon as we've shared the link, unless you're planning on writing it down on papers that we can hand out, there's going to be an email chain at which point it's part of public record that we shared the link with someone. So I almost feel like can we just create the form as something that we can share the link around widely and invite testimony. And then we can try to think of some other completely separate method for collecting anonymous oral testimony for people who feel like they need to go that route. I'm just not sure that this form can do, be all things for all testimony. I hear what you're saying and we do wanna leave space for other people, but I just don't think that this, we're trying to do too much with one, uh, one system here. And I think maybe we can do better to have multiple systems. Um, I, I absolutely agree with that. Yeah. So with that, I feel like if we can sort of think about getting the form into a place where we're asking for the right information that we want, that we imagine we, I mean, last time we talked about what are the, some of the questions that you, we might ask. I think you, Javier, were going to maybe come up with a list that we could use as a sort of starting off point um, when we were imagining having these conversations directly with um, chairs or with other people. So I think we want to pipe in some of that information into the form without making it too unwieldy. Um, I also think we need to kind of clarify who the audience of the form is, because the way it's currently written, if your answer to the first question is no, have you previously served or applied? The, the next two questions aren't relevant to you. Um, because you didn't serve and therefore you didn't have either a positive or a negative experience. And if you haven't engaged in the process at all, similarly, you may not have any thoughts about the applications or appointments and so forth. So again, if this is a, if this is a, a form specifically for people who we know have served, this might be an okay starting point. But if we're also trying to capture people who applied and never served or never applied, then I think we need a different set of questions because this is not going to capture the, the nuance of what we're looking for. I I sort of disagree with that. <laughs> Mostly because they, they are a ton of forms that, you know, if you answer no in question number two, go directly to number five, right? And this is the case. I mean, Obviously, so for example, when we created the form for, for gathering testimonies about policing, we never thought, oh, what happened is somebody who, you know, who has never encountered police see this form. They are not going to be able to answer. They are not going to answer it because it's clear the targeted audience, right? Um, that's, that's sort of my take into this. And the reason why it's done in this way is because this works for and <laughs> and this is a conversation about you know reaching out to serving chairs, civilian chairs, not the city lessons. We're not even 
talking about outreach to the wider community, right? And one of the problems that we have is that uh, even though the city has a list of people that have send cover letters, letter of intention and, and CVs to be able to serve um, and have never been called to serving anything. And I know because I have gotten calls about that. Uh, the city cannot give it to us. And if they give it to us, it's going to be heavily redacted, right? So um, I do agree that there needs to be another layer of outreach, which is was what I told Mara before. Um, if somebody comes to this form and sees, oh, I have never served, but I apply, I, I apply, so I do it. I have neither served or applied. I don't know. I'm not going to do this. I wouldn't do it. What am I going to do if I haven't served or applied? I wouldn't do it. Um, or see somebody served. So here, so I, there is one person who did it, who uh, it's member of the Human Rights Commission. Right, and this is how this is how it would look. This is sort of a right, and and and, and you know, and and this testimony looks super straightforward. <laughs> so I, you know, I, the, I'm gonna be upfront with this. I think the process works in both ways, not only because we need testimonies, but also because I need you guys as members to start shaping your opinion, to start getting information, to start talking to people. Start And, and this is essential, to start talking to people, right? That I need that. In the, in the same way, Kyle Garrick, as, as a council person, talked to his constituents talks to them right because that's the only way that he's gonna you know and he gets probably a ton of emails us to be able to do the right the, the, to do it right we have to talk to people it, we are not going to be able to have we're never going to have all the answers but we are never going to be able to have a good sense of what's going on if we think that a form will make it right um I see the form as anybody who is willing to write down testimony. Okay, the form, the form. Even in the in the bottom of the form, there is a there is a section where anybody can upload. Okay, I want to write it in Word. I just write it in Word. We had people, homeless people, that created, uh, that uh, created uh. Google accounts just to be able to fill fill out forms, right? So I'm not I'm not necessarily worried about about uh, people not being able to get to the form. But my point is that the form is meant essentially to gather testimony for people to write whatever they need to write for us to get a sense if this is a person who has served or not, how long and the level of experience that they you know they have. And, but I do agree completely that there has to be another layer because if we don't talk to people, I mean, and, and I'm going to be upfront here, guys, I have asked you to go and talk to people. So people come to give public testimony. We haven't have anybody. So I think it is everybody in this, in this committee has to sort of pump up. And, and, you know, and that, and that was essentially the reasoning for me to say, okay, if we cannot, if I do, I don't want to put you in a position where you have to go write the testimony, write it down. Is it going to be on you, the redacting? Because if you write it down, that's public record. I said, no, that's way too much. But what about if the members just have conversations and, and the conversation, the goal of the conversation is to lead people to fill out the form. If we come out with another layer of fill out the form, and also you have this other option, I'm I'm totally love it. But again, I do feel that in this, uh, the work doesn't get done in these meetings. And if we're not going to be talking to the community, I don't know how we're going to come with recommendations. 
Jenna, is that an all or a new hand? Um, can you go back to the form itself, um, to the, the questions rather than the this sure. one response? Let me go back. So um, <laughs> I guess I want to say what, what, what you said, which is I, I respectfully disagree. So my feeling is that, yes, if somebody's sort of never served, never applied, never thought about applying, doesn't care about applying, probably not gonna fill out this, this form and that's fine. Um, but the way that this form is currently written, the first two questions are this, have you previously served or applied? Yes or no. And the second question, which appears to be required at this time, is what has been your experience serving on city commission? So the second question assumes that you have indeed served. So that would need to be rewritten. Um, if I feel like it's possible and in fact desirable that somebody's answer to the first question might be, no, I have not served and applied. I have wanted to do so, but I haven't done so for whatever barriers that you know we're all here trying to figure out. And this form in its current iteration doesn't really um, leave much space for that level of interaction. Again, because the third question there, fourth question, do you have any recommendations to improve the existing process assumes that you actually know what the existing process is when perhaps for some people their barrier might be i don't know what the um i don't know what the openings are i don't know what the requirements are and so forth so um you know have never even engaged in the process enough to know that they have responses so i think having a forum is good collecting testimony is good but i think we need to be really clear about who we actually think we want to have filling out this form and the information that we're trying to get from them. And I don't feel like what's currently here is, is capturing that to its fullest possible extent. Perfect. So I don't know if you saw that I is not required anymore. And certainly we can add a section that if you have not serve or apply, is there any reason for that? And they can sort of explore into that and uh, we can see that. Garrick. You're muted. I love the hand <laughs> gestures, but you're muted. Good. So I'm here. Um, so first off, I agree with Jana about um, we might need multiple forms. And, and the way I looked at this first form was I felt like our last meeting, we talked about talking to chairs, our captive audience. So I really just looked at this as a form for that. Um, and so, you know, that first question of, have you previously served or applied would apply to a chair? Like, is it their second term? Is it their, you know, are you recurring? Is this your first experience is how I kind of view that. Um, and again, I, I think that going back to the public records part is that I'm, I'm assuming that most people who are serving on a committee or, you know, a board have gone through the public records because they've had meetings where you have to do the Zoom thing and they talk about that. I might be wrong. Um, with that being said, I, I do think that, um, you know, down the road, we do have to look at another form, which is for the general public, for people who have applied, people who thought of applying. And I, I did not see this form here in front of me as that form. I thought that this was just something that is kind of a starter for the people who are already in the system. Um, you know, a very basic way to approach that thing. Uh, and, and maybe I'm wrong. So I just, I just want to Put that out there. No, you're right in the money. <laughs> As we said, this is for the first uh, sort of layer, the easy, allegedly, the easy outreach. Uh, when? Yeah, so I mean, um, right, that's, I guess that's a little bit of my confusion just right now. Um, because I was, I was, you know, if we're, if we're going to explore barriers, you know, we would want to, you know, advertise it, you know, you know, make it, make it publicly, 
public knowledge that, that, that our committee is seeking this, and then also present it in a way that is um, accessible for people to even submit the information. So like having some paper forms and then having that multi-layered approach of, you know, like one form for people, just general public, um, you know, maybe, you know, do some kind of a local, you know, regional mailing, for example, or, you know, something like that. Um, and then another one for active chairs who are, who are on the boards. And then, you know, we don't, want to ignore people who are actually serving on boards in, in whatever position, um, because they might have something to contribute to. Um, so I just asked the question, is there some way that we could have more time to work on this form in somewhat of a more collaborative way? Um, or creative, maybe a few of us, you know, fool around with Google Forms and do some creating and, and then come back together and, and do it like that. Yeah, so this is when it gets fun. Uh, the document can only be worked by the committee with Quorum and in open meeting. <laughs> so, I would be more than willing. I mean, I would need two more people besides me to have a special meeting to work this. And I'm willing to do it. So who who is uh, going to volunteer? I'm willing to, and I'm not talking about the our next meeting two more, in, uh, two more weeks, right? A meeting, a standing alone meeting to work this collaborative. And that meeting is going to be, uh, it's going to, you know, I, I need two because we're two, four, oh, no, two, two. Because we need quorum, right? So I'm I'm willing to create a subcommittee to see this form. So I'm, you know, again, this is literally this is how it needs to be done because we cannot be editing a document that is going to be used within the public uh, privately. It has to be done in a meeting openly to the public, right? And that meeting has to be advertised, has to have has to be posted 48 hours before, has to go through all that. So I'm willing to schedule to, you know, to have that meeting. So I when would you be able to do it? I know that you are, you know, with okay, excellent. We need one more person. Jenna? Uh, it depends on when it's going to get scheduled, but um, theoretically, yes. Excellent. So, Beth, I'm going to let you know, uh, probably by tomorrow, we're going to come out with a date. Uh, oh. Cynthia, sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, I think this is a good approach, but I would like us to all agree upon who the audience is, who exactly the audience is when when we design the questions. And the other thing, Javier, I want to ask that this document that you presented here wasn't attached to the agenda. So it was a draft, I'm going to say drafted by you. So that's not a violation, right? Can't no. we? Okay. So no, no. Was... And, and, and I shared the link with you, but the okay. link, the link, you would not be able to edit. <laughs> and, yes. that was, and that was intentional. Okay. Okay. So there could be some sharing of that. As with... long as, as, as long as members are not having a conversation and debating what should be on the document. As... Okay, cool. Yeah. So the subcommittee would do this and yeah. then it would come to us and then we'd say, okay. Yeah. Um, and so just in terms of the audience, my my personal sense is that this was going to be um, for people on boards and commissions to find out how they got there. But yeah. I could be wrong. I could no, be you're, wrong. Uh, you're absolutely right. So let me show you. And I have here. 
let me see here. Um, where is it here? Hold on. This happened because I don't buy Microsoft, so I had to use Pages. There you go. Um, I'm going to share with you. So this is a color coding of the assignments that each one of you is going to have. Right. But I cannot send this until we have the, the, the form ready to go. Right. I can send it if people feel comfortable having, you know, casual conversation with people, but we can, we can wait. So, um, 12 minutes left and we did how many sort of a, uh, one point and a half of agenda. Um, cool. So, so this form, as Gary said and Cynthia said, this form is targeted to people who are serving or serve, right? I mean, if if I'm a chair, a civilian chair, and I, I keep stressing that, a civilian chair. No, I'm not talking uh, about uh, the 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 city's person in that in that position, right? Uh, and I have a member that just left, and I think that member should, has something to say. That's the reason why also says serving or serve, right? Because again, easy tar easy target. Uh, the rate the people who are doing it now, right? Um, so cool. Let me think how we're gonna move. So, um, Jenna, can you send to me and when your availability? The idea is to meet this week so we we can get it done. And if we can get it done, uh, we would be able to move this pretty fast because I think this conversation uh, is pretty informative to what we need to do. Is that okay, Jenna? Uh, I thought that we have to post 48 hours in advance, so I don't know how we would meet this uh, week. I'm, I'm counting Saturday and Sunday. Got it. I know, Cynthia, you're absolutely right. Has to be business days. Hmm. <laughs> anyway. So, I mean, I can send you my availability, but this week is doesn't look great anyway, but it sounds like I'm not sure we could get it scheduled and yeah. posted I in mean, time regardless. If we, do, if, if we have your availability tomorrow, we either can opt to meet even Monday, if that's possible. Or depending the time, Wednesday, depending the time that we get that even on Friday. So, um, yeah, we, okay. we, I will so, try to send, I'll try to send you an email right after this meeting. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Um, let's see. So just to give you an update, uh, Jamila sent an email to the city solicitor a couple of weeks ago in relationship to the compensation. Uh, we still are waiting for a written sort of, it takes more time when we're asking not for a oral opinion, but for a written opinion, which is sort of more official. So that takes a little more. So we're still waiting for that. Um, what a match. And meeting a schedule, as I said at the beginning, we were able to come down to the second and fourth uh, Tuesday of every month. Um, so just summarizing when Jenna and myself, we're going to meet as soon as we can, either, you know, Friday or Monday or Tuesday, whatever it is. And we're going to work in this Beth. Can you send me your availability? <laughs> can you send me your availability too? Uh, Friday, Monday, Friday next week. So sorry. Friday this week or Friday next week? This week. I'm 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 reaching for the stars. Um yeah, can you send me your availability? Because I'm I'm gonna need you there. Um okay. 
cool. Cool, 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 cool. Cool. Is there any other comment, any other question? Cynthia. I just wanted to offer, um, but I don't know if it's premature. How do you all feel about maybe I, we have this document from the city clerk, I think that says, this is how the process works. Um, if I schedule a meeting with the person where all those applications go and just, I think, I think it's in the mayor's office and just say, how does the process work from your perspective? Is that out of line? Is that, I mean, it's data. Um, and um, I mean, I'm happy to do it, but it might be premature, but it might give us some insights into the, the form, so. Well, the, that document was sent to the members of the committee a month and a half ago? Yes, uh, or so more, we, maybe. Uh, allegedly, we should have been able to have that, we would have been able to have that, if in the agenda, allegedly, we would have been able to talk, to have that conversation inviting that person, right? So, since, ah, yeah, so yeah, right, that was sent like two months ago. So, I'm assuming that, uh, yeah, yeah. So, Cynthia, that would be beautiful. So, but should we invite the person? I, I agree. I agree. Yes. To the, to the meeting as opposed to me meeting with them one on one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, everybody's in agreement that that is going to be part of the next meeting agenda. Excellent. I see do, a lot of nuts. Do we think it's the, person named court or do we know who that person is that's the person that in my board we go to to find out i i i think so let me confirm with pam but that's that name rings the bell okay yeah pam mentioned that that person the same person okay um so, well karen might know the answer to that question <laughs> yeah i don't want to i don't want to talk out of order but yes it's court in the mayor's office yeah and, and, and Karen, can I ask you the question? So then you, because you are the chair of the city service committee where all of these applications go through, right? Or appointments? Well, the applications don't come to us, the appointments do. So the, appointments. the mayor's office makes the appointments and then we confirm them. Okay. Okay. That's good. Good info for us. Yeah. Excellent. Carry on. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Beth. Um, what is the appropriate time to talk about when these meetings will be on Tuesdays and the? Uh, let's do it right now. We have five minutes. Either seven or seven thirty. It should be a really easy conversation. Uh, I vote seven thirty personally, but seven thirty is so much better for me. Two seven thirty. Carrick looks. Uh, That's fine with me. Seven thirty is fine. Carrick uh, looks indifferent to the time, so seven thirty. <laughs> Mara. Excellent, excellent. Okay, seven thirty. Seven thirty. Seven thirty. So seven thirty to nine has to be an hour and a half, right? Um. Cool. So we agree that the next, uh, the only agenda item that we have for sure are two, which is the min all the minutes that we need to approve. Plus, Cynthia, let me know how the outreach to court goes. Okay, so we if we to see if we can secure uh him uh for next meeting. And just, just to clarify, you want me to secure him or? Yeah, if you can, well, that would be lovely. Okay. And uh, just to clarify, so and I almost forget this. Um, we. So how we how m m me meeting with ja with uh, with Gwen and Jenna is gonna work is that it's gonna get posted as one of our meeting. Okay, so if you guys wanna come, as long as I have quorum, we're fine and we're gonna be able to work it out. Okay, uh, you're not necessarily required, but. It's I'm gonna post it. I'm gonna post it as one of our meetings, so it has the option for you guys to go and be part of the conversation. Is that okay? I think that sounds great. Excellent. Yeah, and I learned all this from Alex Jared. Literally, he knows his stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 
anyway, so uh, motion to adjourn. Uh, Karen has her hand up. Oh, Karen, is that a new hand or an old hand? Or neither? Sorry, it's an old hand. <laughs> okay, motion to adjourn. Looking for one? I make a motion to adjourn. I second. A second. <laughs> the same time. I'm taking Cynthia. Does that work? <laughs> it's fine with me. I didn't, I couldn't catch it all. Okay, who wants to adjourn? Javier? Yep. Uh, Mara? Yep. Gwen? Yes. Jenna? Yes. Garrick? Yes. And Cynthia? Yes. Unanimous. Everybody wants to adjourn.